to the entertaining Talking Sports. What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. Before I get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone that came into the live stream last night. That was a lot of fun, the group uh, roundtable for the New York Giants. Going to try to do that every two or three weeks, um, alternating channels. So that was a lot of fun. In addition to that, I'll be live probably tomorrow night for my general Q&A and then probably almost every day leading up into the draft, being that it's the biggest sporting event in the world right now, and I cannot wait for it to get here. I'm sure you guys got a lot of questions and just want to talk football. So should be a really busy week on the channel. Really looking forward to it. Um, in this video, I kind of wanted to dive into two small stories regarding the New York Giants. One came out late last night. The other came out, um, you know, today regarding Dave Gettleman. Um, the first story I'm going to talk about, and we're going to touch on both, is Makai Becton. Becton news came out late last night, had failed a drug test, and we're going to have to wait and see how that affects his draft stock. Becton, of course, has been connected to the New York Giants, dating all the way back to Daniel Jeremiah. Um, with his mock draft, uh, had, having him go number four to the Giants, and Giants fans have been enamored with him ever since. Becton, of course, the tall imposing force. I think he's 6'7", 365, um, and definitely has a lot of upside, but definitely there's questions in terms of his techniques and, and things of that nature, and I had him ranked fourth in terms of an offensive tackle. So in a way, to me, this is good news if it's going to affect this draft stock because I didn't want to be taking him at four, um, and maybe the Giants still would, but history would show you that they probably wouldn't. The other story I wanted to touch on is what Brandon Bean had to say about Dave Gettleman. I think Dave Gettleman gets a bad rap by some people, and sometimes I suppose it's deserved, especially the Leonard Williams trade, but Bean basically came out and said he manipulates the media, um, and that's what that picture had to do with, that picture that went viral, and he's a lot smarter than people give him credit for. Of course, he's come out and said, you know, and you could argue that, at least with the Odell Beckham trade, he came out and said, we didn't sign him to trade him, which, you know, obviously was trying to drive up his trade market, and maybe Gettleman is a little bit smarter than people give him credit for. I think he's a smart guy. I think sometimes you know, he, uh, let's put it this way, he takes more chances than he probably should, but let's jump into some of the quotes regarding Gettleman and regarding um, the uh, the news on Mekhi Becton. First thing I wanted to show you guys was the picture that went viral with Dave Gettleman, and I've jokingly said throughout this whole process with the whole, uh, you know, with, with, the, with the virtual draft that I'm worried that he probably picked the wrong player, being that he's not the most tech-savvy guy, and according to Bean, he thinks it's incredibly possible that Gettleman leaked these pictures intentionally to try to give teams the wrong impre uh, the, the impression that he's clueless and he likes to play up that mantra. This was what Bean said. Can't trust him. Dave's smart, man. He's throwing all the curveballs out there, Bean said of Get Gettleman's viral home office video. He's actually pretty tech savvy. Don't let him fool you in all seriousness. It wasn't a tongue-in-cheek comment either. Bean appeared dead serious. He was offering a legitimate warning to members of the media that they're being fooled intentionally. And is that possible? Yeah. I mean, sometimes you see some quotes that this guy has to say, and you're like, really? You know, and maybe it is possible. Maybe he does manipulate the media and try to give off this impression that he's not that smart of a guy, and maybe he tries to take advantage of opposing teams because of it. Um, you know, I, I personally think a lot of the trades he's made outside of the Alec Ogletree trade have worked out pretty well. I think at this point in time, nobody could really argue the value he got back for Odell Beckham when you factor in, you know, other wide receivers that have gone to other teams and what they got in return. I don't think many people could argue the Olivier Vernon trade. I think we got a ton back in terms of Kevin Zeitler. Can you argue the Leo Williams trade? Absolutely. And every GM is going to have their good and bad moments. But I by no means think that Dave Gettleman is dumb. I think a lot of people look at that photo and they say that this guy's lost in the tech world. Never once thought that. Do I think he did it intentionally? Not necessarily. You know, he might not, you know, he might not be the guy with the most updated laptop. I mean, you go, you look at the, um, I was watching the Bill Belichick and um, Nick Saban um, documentary. I think it was on HBO. And uh, uh, Belichick had the same exact computer that Gettleman has. He had that old ThinkPad laptop. Nobody says anything about Belichick. He's old school. The guy's brilliant. So I think sometimes Gettleman gets a bad rap by the New York media. Next thing we're going to pull up is the quote from Ian Rappaport regarding Mekhi Becton. Multiple players had drug tests fla uh, flagged at the NFL Combine, and among these is projected top 10 pick Louisville offensive tackle Mekhi Becton. I'm told teams were made aware of this. Becton had no failed drug test in college per new CBA rules. He goes into stage one for no more than 60 days. So that's the big news regarding the top of the draft. Of course, news came out um, earlier in the week about Zach Bowen. Bowen, of course, being a 
round two prospect, Becton, with this news leaking out, would lead me to believe that the New York Giants would not take him at number four. Now, if the Giants were to trade down with, say, the Raiders, would they still potentially be interested in him at 12? Yeah, that's very possible. Um, but one thing that scared me in terms of Becton, because like I said at the beginning of this video, I personally am not in favor of taking Becton that early in the draft. They did come out and basically say the New York Giants that they're going to evaluate players on what they can be, not what they currently are. And you could definitely argue that Becton, with his size and you know, you know, some of the things you see on tape, could be the best lineman in this class with the proper coaching. And that scared me because I do think he's the riskiest. Knowing the Giants' history after this has come out, I would be shocked if the Giants were to take Mekhi Becton at four. So at this point in time, I'd probably cross them off my list. All you got to go is, do is, is go back and look um, at the draft where we ended up uh, passing on Laramie Tunsil for Eli Apple. Laramie Tunsil in that draft before the, the, the viral photos came out about him smoking marijuana was a consensus top two or three pick in that draft. The Giants passed on him at number 10 because of it. The Giants are a conservative organization. I do not see them drafting Mekhi Becton after this news has come out. I could be wrong, but I would be surprised on draft night. I think right now it's down to three players. If you ask me my honest opinion, I think it's Wirfs, I think it's Wills, and I think, of course, it's Isaiah Simmons. And we're going to have to wait and see how it all plays out in just in five short days. But I do not expect Mekhi Becton to be a New York Giant. Now, if Mekhi Becton were to really fall down and fall, say, to 36, which don't rule it out, things happen on, on draft night that are crazy. Do I think that'll happen? Probably not. But if he fell to 36, would the Giants entertain it? Well, that's a question that deserves some answering. Um, you know, Gettleman obviously likes really big hog mollies. If they were to take a tackle at four or trade down and take a tackle with their first pick, probably not. They could always be open up to, to doubling up at the tackle, though, and uh, have him replace Solder after next year. I doubt it. If they were to take Isaiah Simmons, I would think Becton would very much be in play at 36. Like I said, don't bank on that. I do not think he will fall to the second round, but it's certainly something to think about to see how this drug test does affect his draft stock. As always, guys, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.